Well, that's about the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> All three skits. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Let's look... Uh, in the Bible, okay? Let's look in uh, 1 Samuel. Could you, uh, could you get that guy to come back and move that over? Just <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. 1 Samuel. That's in the Bible here somewhere. Yeah, First Samuel seventeen. Yeah. Read a couple of verses here, and uh, try to preach a little while. Verse forty-eight, First Samuel seventeen, verse forty-eight. I will say it, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near, or drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slain it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Everybody, I'm sure, knows the story of David and Goliath. That's probably the most familiar Old Testament story uh, that uh, you've uh, read. It's one of the stories that you can cheer about. Uh, evil is overcome by good. The little guy beats the big guy. Amen. Uh, the underdog comes out the top dog. You can't beat that, son. I mean, uh, that's, what, that's a great story. Amen. Uh, here it is now, you got this valley of Elah, and the, the Philistines are on one side of the mountain, and Israel's on the other side, and uh, the heavyweight champion of the Philistines, a big old ugly brute by the name of Goliath, uh, he's out there in the valley, and he's challenging Israel, uh, he's challenging them to own one winner-take-all fight. Uh, but Israel had a problem. Uh, nobody wanted to fight. Nobody wanted to take him on. Uh, they even put up a reward uh, for uh, anyone who would fight him. Verse number 25, uh, it tells about uh, how uh, the king, uh, had uh, what he'd do for the man that uh, uh, would fight this uh, giant. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him. Uh, with great riches, and he will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Uh, uh, the king said, hey, if one of you guys will uh, come out there, go out there and fight that giant, I uh, said, I'll give you a castle, I'll give you my daughter, uh, you won't have to pay any more taxes or nothing, uh, but, uh, uh, but nobody would take him up on it. Uh, I, I read about a, a story about a rich millionaire who had a daughter, uh, he wanted to get married off, uh, but she was so ugly. Uh, fact is, uh, she was so ugly that when she went to the ocean, the tide wouldn't even come in. Uh, but he wanted to get her married off, and uh, so he came up uh, with this ingenious idea. Uh, he invited a hundred of the best-looking uh, uh, men in the country to come, and he filled his swimming pool with alligators, and he said, the first young man that will jump into that pool and swim from one end to the other... I said, I'll give you a mansion on the hill, an oil well, and I'll give you my daughter to be your wife. Dead silence. Uh, nobody would jump in. Uh, nobody would take him up on it. All of a sudden, uh, there was a loud splash. 
And this guy went from one end of that pool to the other just like that. I mean, son, uh, he, he went from one end to the other just uh, uh, quick as a wink. And he was out on the other side gasping for breath, exhausted, uh, uh, all doubled over, struggling for breath. Uh, and the millionaire ran up to him and said, Son, uh, uh, that was awesome. Uh, I said, I guess you really want my daughter uh, uh, to be your wife. I guess you really want her hand in marriage, don't you? And he said, No, sir. Uh, he said, well, I guess you want the oil well, don't you? And he said, no. Uh, I said, well, I guess you want the mansion on the hill. And he, sa- uh, he said, no, sir. He said, the only thing I want to know is who pushed me in. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. Nobody could be pushed in to fight in Goliath. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, they couldn't be pushed into it. They couldn't be bought into it. Uh, uh, they couldn't be bullied into it. Uh, uh, they couldn't be bribed into it. Uh, uh, except this one little guy, a uh, little shepherd boy stepped up and said, I'll fight him. Uh, uh, no training no, uh, uh, in warfare, no armor, no sword, no spear, no shield. Uh, uh, just a shepherd boy. Uh, and this little shepherd boy took a slingshot uh, and a stone uh, and went down in the valley uh, uh, to face the heavyweight champion of the Philistines uh, uh, amen uh, and David got the victory uh, and God got the glory amen what a story hey, tell us, uh, that's a wonderful story uh, we've all heard it over and over uh, uh, but I'll tell you it still stirs my heart uh, uh, amen uh, uh, even though it took place 3,000 years ago uh, uh, it still has something to say to us today uh, every one of us in this building tonight, uh, uh, all of us adults, young people, uh, uh, we all have uh, giants that we have to face. Yes, sir. Uh, some of you uh, here this evening, you're facing some of the biggest giants you've ever had to face in your life. Uh, uh, some of you are facing giants of despair. Uh, you don't know what to do. Your back's to the wall. Uh, some of you are facing giants of disillusion. Things just hadn't turned out like you thought they would. Uh, Some of you are facing giants of disappointment, uh, giants of discouragement. Uh, This story here in our text uh, is not just the story of how David whipped the giant, uh, but we have here in our story uh, of how you and I uh, can face the giants that we face and how we can whip our giants too. Uh, So I want to preach a little while tonight by the help of God on how to whip a giant. Amen. 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 Uh, how to whip a giant. Number one, uh, you must confront your fears. Uh, if you're going to whip that giant in your life, uh, uh, you're going to have to confront your fears. Uh, there was a big reason uh, why all of Israel was showing yellow uh, that day down there in the valley, uh, and his name was Goliath. Uh, amen. I uh, want look at this giant for just a minute. Uh, uh, notice he was a terrifying giant. Uh, uh, some commentaries I've read uh, said that this giant was uh, uh, from uh, between nine uh, and eleven feet tall. Uh, he was uh, he he wore a big old bronze t-shirt uh, that weighed 125 pounds. Uh, just the head of his spear weighed 19 pounds. Uh, he was an industrial size human tank. Uh, I bet when he walked, the ground shook. Uh, he probably weighed over 600 pounds, uh, uh, counting all of his armor, uh, and they were afraid of him. Uh, they were afraid of this guy. And verse 24 said uh, uh, they wasn't just afraid of him, they were sore afraid. Uh, I mean, they were terrified of this mountain of a man. Uh, so here we have uh, uh, this man, he's all decked out in brass and shining. Uh, and the brother, he's walking around blaspheming God, uh, uh, berating the army of Israel. Uh, uh, he's bellowing to the king. Uh, I'm telling you, he's a terrifying giant. Uh, uh, not only is he a terrifying giant, uh, he was a talking giant. Uh, uh, verse is 8 and 10. I mean, here this big old brood, he's a cussing and a swearing and he's insulting and challenging. He was saying in essence, he was saying you bunch of egg sucking, lily livered, spineless wonders. Why don't you come out here and fight for your God? He said, I'll fight for my God. He was a terrifying giant. He was a talking giant. He was a testing giant. For 40 days every morning and evening, friend, he would come out there and challenge the army of Israel. In Bible numerology, 40 is the number of testing. Moses spent 40 years on the backside of the desert before he met God. Israel wandered in the wilderness 40 years. The Lord Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights before he was tempted of the devil. So here was a test. 
David had to face this giant. And David was human just like you and I are human. David had to face the same kind of fears that you and I have to face. But I'll tell you, he overcame his fear. How did he do it? The same way, brother, you and I can. He replaced his fear of the giant with a greater fear. Amen. You see, there's two kinds of fears. There's the fear of man, and then there's the fear of God. The fear of God can deliver you from the fear of man. The fear of man made Saul a coward, but the fear of God made David a conqueror. Saul was frozen by fear, but David was fueled by faith. David knew there wasn't a Saul on planet Earth that could stand before the power of God. I'll tell you, that fear will stop you in your tracks. That fear will keep you from attempting great things for God. That fear that will keep you from expecting great things from God. That Proverbs 29 verse 25 said, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. God can help us. He can help us deal with fear in one of two ways. He can either remove the fear of the thing that we're afraid of or he can subdue the fear of the thing. That's what he did for David. Amen. So, you got to, listen, uh, number two, you got to control your feelings. David had plenty of problems. I mean, if you go whoop the giant, you got to control your feelings. Uh, David had plenty of problems uh, just contending with this big old giant. But he had other problems too that he had to contend with. He had to put up with the criticism of his family. (laughs) Verses 26, 27, and 28. Uh, David's brothers were not too encouraging. Uh, I mean, he was uh, criticizing David. He was laughing at him. Oh, what are you doing out here, you little nerd? You're just trying to show off. Uh, Eliab, uh, he, he, uh, he was trying to cover up his cowardice by criticizing David. Uh, He was trying to shame David uh, in order to cover his own shame. Uh, I'll tell you, listen, uh, you start trying to kill some giants in your life, neighbor, uh, you can expect some criticism. Uh, The cowardly critics uh, are going to try to tell you that it can't be done, uh, that you can't do it. Uh, David had to face the criticism of his family, uh, and then he had to face the cynicism of his friends. Uh, uh, Verse number 33, uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 in essence, what they're telling him, uh, uh, they're saying, you ain't got a chance, kid. Uh, uh, hey, hey, here's a man of war down there. Uh, and you're just a kid. Uh, uh, look at the size of that guy. Uh, uh, he'll chew you up and spit you out. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, I'll tell you, young people, if you listen to folks, uh, uh, listen to, and the, and the, uh, the uh, giants that you're facing, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, you're going to have to uh, expect some criticism. Uh, uh, hey, if you listen to folks uh, uh, that are trying to criticize you and try to stop you, uh, uh, you'll never do nothing for God. Uh, amen. Uh, there'll be criticism. There'll be mockery. Uh, people will laugh at you. Uh, they'll try to uh, they'll stop you from doing anything for God. Uh, and try to stop you from facing the giants. Uh, uh, that'll keep you from living for God. Uh, amen. Uh, listen, old David. He just controlled those feelings. He didn't let it sway. Here we got King Saul. He's a sovereign. Uh, here we got a soldier. David's brother. And then here we have a shepherd boy. Hey Amen. You got a sovereign, you got a soldier. They didn't want to fight the, the giant, but the shepherd did. Yeah. Uh, all the other two did was try to drown David in a sea of discouragement. Uh, uh, David had to deal with those feelings. Uh, uh, he couldn't let his feelings run away with him. Uh, I'll tell you, we have to do the same thing. Hey Amen. Uh, uh, the discouragers and the critics uh, uh, will be many, uh, uh, but just keep on keeping on. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, uh, confront your fears. Uh, uh, control your feelings. Amen. Uh, something else we can do uh, when we face, uh, when we're trying to whip the giant. Uh, n- uh, number three, consecrate your fight. There you go. If you're going to win the fight and have victory over the giant, uh, we got to see the battle from God's perspective, from the proper sp- perspective. Look at verse. Four, look at verse forty-seven. Bible said, in all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword, or not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord. 
And he will give you in our hand. The battle is the Lord. Uh, now listen, David wasn't fighting for God. God was fighting for David. Uh, uh, hey, David wasn't fighting God's battle. Uh, God was fighting David's battle. Hey Amen. God don't need nobody to fight his battles. Uh, but I'll tell you, we sure do need him to fight uh, our battles. Amen. Uh, here's old Goliath now. He's bigger than David. Uh, he's stronger than David. Uh, he's meaner than David. Uh, and by the wall standard, uh, and by the wall's way of thinking, he should have won that fight. But old Goliath had done picked on the wrong somebody. The battle was the Lord. Now I'll tell you, over two thousand years ago, or over two hundred years ago, uh, there was a little David called America uh, that fear, uh, that faced a huge giant uh, uh, called uh, uh, called Great Britain. Uh, Britain's navy ruled the sea. Uh, uh, her army was the best equipped, best trained in the world. Uh, but Patrick Henry stood up one day and said, uh, uh, "We are not weak if we make a proper use of the things." Uh, and the means which the God of heaven has placed in our power. He said the battle, sir, is to the vigilant. The battle is not for the strong alone, but to the vigilant, to the advent, and to the brave. I'll tell you, we realize that the battle's His. We let Him do the fighting. The battle's already won. Hallelujah. I'm glad the battle is the Lord's. Amen. Yeah. It is the Lord, Brother Harry. Not only that, you must continue your fellowship. Look at verse 15. The Bible said in verse 15, But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Look at verse 17. And Jesse said unto David, His son, take now for thy brethren an eth of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp of thy brethren. Now then look at verse number 32. Uh, the Bible, and David said unto Saul, uh, Let no man's heart fail because of, of him. Uh, thy servant will go and fight this Philistine. Uh, there's a progression here in David's life. Uh, in verse 15, if it was necessary, uh, uh, David was ready to feed his father's sheep. Uh, uh, verse 17, if it was necessary, uh, he was ready to go and find his brothers. Uh, uh, in verse 32, if it was necessary, uh, he was ready to fight the giant. Uh, uh, whatever there was to do, uh, uh, little thing or big thing, uh, uh, listen, find his brothers or fight the giant. Uh, uh, David was ready to do it. Uh, and the lesson we need to learn from all that is this uh, uh, David was prepared for the big things uh, uh, because David was faithful in the little things amen yes sir uh, David was prepared for the giant uh, uh, because he was faithful uh, uh, to take care of his father's sheep uh, all of his life uh, had been a dress rehearsal uh, uh, for that very time in his life uh, and when Saul try, uh, tried to talk him out of fighting the giant uh, uh, he said well boy he'll massacre you uh, uh, you ain't got a chance uh, uh, but David said the same God uh, uh, that delivered me out of the paw of the bear uh, and out of the paw of the lion uh, uh, said that same God uh, it's going to deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Amen. David was faithful in the little things. He was filled with faith to take on the big things. Amen. Yeah. That's right. That's good the National Geographic magazine reported that the bull moose fight for dominance in the breeding season in the fall of the year. And they do battle and they butt heads. And the one whose antlers break first lose the fight. It's the one whose antlers does not break that wins. And they said, really, the battle that's fought in the fall is really won or lost in the summer. They said it depended on which bull moose ate the best diet and gained the most weight and developed the strongest antlers and said that's the one that will win the fight. Uh, David was prepared for the giant brother in public uh, because of the way, uh, the godly way that he lived in private. Amen. Uh, he had gotten prepared for that fight uh, uh, way back yonder. Amen. Uh, and uh, listen, some of you sitting here, uh, uh, you're getting prepared uh, uh, for the battles that you're going to have to face out yonder. Uh, and listen, if you'll be faithful uh, in the little things, uh, uh, God will bless you uh, and God will help you when the big yeah. things come along. Yeah. Amen. Right. 
the greatest battles you and I fight are not in public view. Uh, they're fought in private. Uh, and whatever victory you've had in this camp meeting or will have, uh, uh, brother, listen, in these worship services, uh, uh, hey, it's been won in those prayer rooms, uh, in those secret places at home, uh, in the past weeks and months as you've been preparing. Uh, uh, brother, that's when the battle's been won. Uh, uh, to win the fight against the giant, uh, uh, we must, uh, uh, listen, we must continue our fellowship. Amen. And then we must concentrate our focus if we're going to fight, if we're going to whip the giant. There was a big difference difference between where David was looking and where Saul was looking and where Israel was looking. In verse number 25, uh, listen, everybody's looking at that giant. Verse 33, everybody was talking about the man. The name Goliath was on everybody's lips. Like the name Bin Laden. I get so tired of hearing that. It's a beatingest thing I ever heard tell of in my life. Son, they, they, hey, they can... They, they got all... The most highly uh, technology training in the world and we've got the most sophisticated uh, uh, weaponry in the world and the, mo- the most sophisticated uh, hey they can uh, uh, they got satellites out there uh, uh, that can uh, beam in on this place uh, I mean from way out yonder in space somewhere uh, uh, and listen tell you how many hairs I got growing in that little old mole right there I mean uh, uh, they can find uh, hey they can find you uh, uh, and listen they can find out anything they want to know about you uh, uh, hey uh, uh, all they got to do is hit that locker they can they know everything about you. Uh, but listen, isn't it amazing? They can't find that one guy. I got so tired of hearing uh, we're coming up on the anniversary of that and it sort of died down a little bit. Uh, but I'll tell you about that Bin Laden. I got so tired of hearing Bin Laden uh, uh, hundreds of times a day. I started making me up names for him. Osama Bin Laden. I called him Osama Bin Lousy. Osama Bin Loco. Oh, some have been pretty lonesome over in them caves. I got tired of hearing it, amen. A uh, hundred times a day. Uh, nobody could see anything but, uh, but him. Hey, uh, nobody could see anything but Goliath. Uh, uh, hey, uh, the, hey, the David's uh, attention was not focused on Goliath. Uh, uh, hey, David said in verse 37, uh, uh, moreover the Lord. Uh, uh, David's focus was on the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 45, uh, he said, Thou comest to me with a sword uh, and with a spear and with a shield. Uh, but he said, I come to thee uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, amen. Uh, the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, he said, This day uh, will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. Uh, and everybody's eye was on Goliath. Uh, but David's eye was on God. Hallelujah. If you're going to whoop the giant in your life, you got to get your eyes off the foe and get your eyes on the Father. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Get your eye off the giant and get your eye on God. If you focus on the foe, it'll bring fear. But focusing on the Father will bring faith. Yeah. Amen. And then you got to confess your faith if you're going to whoop the giant. Yeah. Verse 37, verse 36, he said, This day will the Lord deliver thee unto mine head. Faith is not believing God can do something. Faith is believing God will do something. Faith don't bring victory. Faith is the victory. 1 John 5, 4 said, And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Let me close with this. Got to conquer our foe. Notice how David won the victory. Notice the manner of victory. Verse 38 and 39. Uh, Saul armed David with his armor. And he put a helmet and a brass upon his head. And also he armed him with a coat of mail. And he girded his sword upon his armor. And he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, uh, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. 
Uh, David wouldn't wear Saul's armor uh, uh, because it wouldn't fit. Uh, uh, Saul was a head taller than anyone else in Israel. Uh, and David was just a teenager. Uh, uh, can you imagine what David looked like uh, uh, clanging around in that old armor of Saul's? Uh, uh, hey, he said, I can't wear this stuff. Uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, you don't fight giants uh, uh, with man-made armor. Uh, uh, he didn't need the armor of Saul. Uh, he already had the armor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't, hey, you don't win the battles of life. They're the weapons you can see. You win with the weapons you can't see. 2 Corinthians 10 4 said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. There was the manner of his victory, but then there was the might of his victory. Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Uh, the Lord of hosts was with him. Uh, the Lord of uh, uh, the armies. Uh, uh, brother, that's what David needed right then. Uh, he needed the Lord of the armies. Uh, he needed the Lord that had his fighting britches on. Uh, the Lord that had never been whipped. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice the method of his victory. I mean, here David takes a old slingshot. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Let's see. I need some big old guy. Yeah, come here. I need a little guy. Oh, he's too big. I need a little fellow. Would he help me, that little guy right there, you think? You think he'd help me? Come here. Come here. You stand right there. Stand right there. That's Goliath. <laughs> Ugly brute, ain't he? That's David right there. Hey, can, hey, can you imagine what that looked like? Old David, I mean, old, old Goliath, he's stomping back and forth across the earth. He, I mean, man, he's, hey, and he's challenging them. Hey, send me somebody out here. I'll make shish kebab out of him. I'll stick him on the end of this spear. Hey, send me somebody out here. And he turned, and the armies of the Philistines are all behind him. And all of a sudden, out of the camp of Israel comes this little guy, a little fellow like this. And that's about what it looked like compared to, and here's this little fellow come out there uh, with nothing but a sling shot in his head and old Goliath got an armor bearer up there in front of him uh, and uh, and everybody started the armies back there start laughing uh, and the Philistines are laughing they're down on their hands and knees uh, about like we was a while ago uh, laughing to their guts was a busting uh, I mean here uh, and old Goliath is mad as a devil uh, he said are you making fun of me uh, what do you mean uh, sending a little old boy out here I uh, said why well, come here boy I uh, said I'll give you to the fowls there. But you know what that little boy did? Just like he was doing a minute ago. He rested down in that bag. And he took him out of stone. And he, he slung it around three times. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Holy Ghost. And he let it go. And let it, it hit him right between the eyes. Amen. And like a giant old tree. Down he went. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, but that wasn't the end of it. Uh, uh, hey, uh, get back down there. Uh, listen, uh, that little boy, uh, that little shepherd boy, uh, took that slide. Hey, did you know uh, uh, when you get hit uh, in, the, in the front of the head, uh, uh, the Bible said uh, that uh, uh, that stone sank up in his forehead. When you get hit in the front, uh, you go that way. Uh, but this old guy, uh, this big old brute, he went this way. He fell forward. Uh, hey, you know what happened? Uh, just about the time that uh, rock hit him in the head, uh, God reached down there and went... Uh, 
an old Goliath. I mean, as he's falling down, he's got a surprised look on his face. He can't believe what's happening. And that little old boy, he comes running. He comes running up here and he gets up on top of that big old giant and he stands up on that giant and he takes his own sword out and he starts hacking and hacking and hacking and he cuts his head off and he grabs his old head and holds it up. Hey, oh, look at him. See his old turn. He was probably holding it up by the ponytail. Probably, probably held it up by the earrings. And shaking that old head. And the Philistine army took off. Amen. Thank you, David. I like upsets, don't you? I like upsets. Like, yeah. Like uh, when Mike Tyson. Uh, you, you remember when it used to be Iron Mike Tyson? No, it's panty waist now. It's sissy pants now. But it used to be Iron Mike. Oh, Iron Mike, when he fought Buster Douglas. You remember that? Buster Douglas was the... Th- he was underdog 34 to 1. Underdog. And uh, hey, uh, I, I went to bed that night uh, at about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. My phone rang uh, and it was my son. And he said, Daddy, you ain't going to believe this. I said, what under God has happened? Uh, what? I mean, woke me up. Uh, he said, uh, Buster Douglas uh, uh, knocked Mike Tyson's lights out. I reached over and grabbed Sue. I said, Sue, look, hey, uh, Mike Tyson just got his lights put out. <laughs> Underdog. Yeah. Hey, the little guy won. Uh, hey, uh, he, hey, a uh, uh, good overcame evil. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love it. What about when the U.S. hockey team yeah. beat the Russians in the Olympics? Yeah. Son. In my house, pandemonium broke out. <laughs> oh, man. What about this past fall? Football. I love college football, Brother Ron. I love it. College, I like... I like North Carolina Tar Heels. I like the Mellon I didn't know they had a football team on Anyway, the the North Carolina Tar Heels was playing Clemson. Clemson, South Carolina. It was Clemson's homecoming. Uh, we were playing, we went in uh, uh, underdogs, like uh, uh, eight to one underdogs uh, uh, going in to uh, play Clemson on their homecoming on their, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, the stadiums was full. Uh, uh, boy, uh, uh, the crowd was cheering on their Tigers. Uh, uh, but our old Tar Heels went in there. Uh, and son, we give them a good, uh, uh, we give them a good whooping, buddy. Uh, I mean, 38 to three in front of the home crowd. I like an upset, don't you? I like an upset. I didn't. I didn't hear that. But see, listen. I got three favorite teams. Three favorites. I got North Carolina Tar Heels number one, Georgia Bulldogs number two, and whoever beats Clemson. <laughs> yeah, I like upsets. Amen. I'll tell you, this was the upset of all upsets. There's a story of some guy who's digging a well out in Israel in a desert, and he discovered a casket that had a mummy in it. And when he examined that mummy, he called the curator of the museum in Jerusalem and told him, he said, I found a 3,000 year old mummy that died of a sudden heart attack. 
And the curator of the, uh, the museum said, that's unbelievable. He said, how in, the world, how in the world do you know that he died of a sudden heart attack? And the fellow said, well, he's got this little white piece of paper in his hand that says 5,000 shekels on Goliath. That would do it to you, wouldn't it? Huh? Nobody expected David to win. Nobody. But to tell you the truth, be honest, the fight was fixed. It was, it was rigged. It was rigged. Oh, Goliath didn't... Oh, not a chance. David didn't kill Goliath for God. God killed Goliath for David. The motive is victory and I'm done. The reason David fought that giant, the reason David laid his life on the line, he didn't do it so everybody would know that David was in the camp. No, sir, not at all. He did it so that everyone would know that there was a God in Israel. He had one motive and that was to glorify and honor God. Uh, and when he saw no one would go out and fight the giant, uh, uh, he, has, he asked one of the greatest questions in the Bible. Uh, he said, is there not a cause? Uh, uh, David was saying, uh, uh, I'll not stand by and listen to this big uh, uh, bully blaspheme my God. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, now listen, let me bring the story right up to date. Uh, uh, right here, right now, listen. Uh, uh, many believe uh, uh, in the God of yesterday. Many believe in the God of the tomorrow. Uh, uh, but they don't believe in the God of today. Right. Amen. Uh, we read the Old Testament and we say, boy, that's what God used to do. Uh, and we read Revelation and we say, well, that's what God's going to do. Uh, but I want to tell you, neighbor, this book was written uh, to tell you and me what God can do right now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The same God that fought for David fights for us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Same God that gave David victory over that giant can give you victory yeah. over the giant in your life. Let's stand, please. Are you facing a giant? How's your faith? Are you trusting the Lord to fight your battles? Or are you leaning on the arm of the flesh? Is it well with your soul? The battle's the Lord's, Mom, Dad, young people. Why don't you bring it to Him tonight? He can handle it. He can handle that giant you're facing. He'll fight your battle for you. You need to come tonight. We're closing the service in just a very few minutes. The service will be over. We want to give you an opportunity to come. God's speaking in your heart. Come tonight. One by one, Jesse's sons stood before the prophet. Their father knew a king would soon be found. When each one passed, except the last, no one thought to call him, surely he would never wear a crown. But when others seem a shepherd boy, God may see a king. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things, in just a moment He can touch you and everything will change. When others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king.
before he sings the next verse, if there's anybody here on the altar or come to the altar, you'd like somebody to pray with you? You have some decision to make or you need some counsel or some guidance? Just lift your hand and I'll see to it somebody gets by to pray with you. One of these preachers or godly women here that can help you. I know most of the time you can settle your business. Why don't you be seated here? We got one young lady over here. Dee Dee, maybe if you could pray with her. Let's take some time and just uh, pray or listen to the words of this song. And if you need to make your way out, folks will let you by. One by one. Problems come, dreams get shattered, at times it seems so hard to understand, but things like chance and circumstance, they don't really matter. For our Father holds tomorrow in His hand. And when others seem a shepherd boy, God may see a King. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things. In just a moment, He can touch you, and everything will change. When others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. No, it wasn't the oldest, and it wasn't the strongest chosen on that day. Yet the giant fell, and nations trembled when they stood in his way. And when others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things, in just a moment he can touch you and everything will change when others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. God may see.